Let's talk about some OTAs buzz coming out of Dove Valley. So welcome into the Broncos Breakdown by Chat Sports. Matthew Peterson here. Now, one quick disclaimer. I'm filming this a bit earlier in the week. I had to jet out of town for a wedding. So in case anything gets dated, I don't think it will. You at least know why. Now, I want to kind of get some good vibes going right now. I feel like things are a bit dry, a bit stale at the moment because it's the offseason. I get that. But hey. Whether you really believe it or not, let's get some good vibes going into the Broncos metaverse. Hit that thumbs up button if you are in on Sean Payton saving, resurrecting, and getting Russell Wilson back to his Pro Bowl level. level we could all use it. So hit that thumbs up button down below. Now, some OTAs, news, and rumors from Denver. So Bleacher Report put out an article with some storylines they are buying and selling. And one of the storylines they are selling is that Russell Wilson has looked sharp under Sean, under Sean Payton. Now, Russ showed up uh, noticeably thinner, right? He looked like he dropped, I'd say, at least 15 pounds, and it could be closer to 30 pounds. He said he's feeling lean and mean. Now, he's coming off a down season, of course, that's kind of putting it lightly. 16 touchdowns, a career low for Russ in a single season. Now, this is what Sean Payton had to say on number three. He's picking it up. The timing and all those things are required. For the first five weeks, we were just lifting and running. So now we're getting into some football activity, and we're ahead of schedule on the practice. But yeah, he's picking it up. Looks good. Looks sharp. Now, I'll be honest, it is a challenge to know what to believe when it comes to not just the preseason, but the pre-preseason, right? We aren't even in spitting distance of training camp, really. So we're just watching a bunch of organized team activities, non-padded practices, no contact drills, quarterbacks throwing two receivers with not a DB in a mile area. And we have to try and decipher what's real and what's not when it comes to the hype. And that is very, very difficult to do. And might I even add, impossible to do, right? Everyone looks good in OTAs. And if you don't, that's a major concern. So for the Broncos to have Sean Payton, excuse me, Russell Wilson looking good, thumbs up, right? But you should be looking good when you're competing against a shell of a defense that's not even allowed to tackle. Now, this is what Alex Ballantyne from Bleacher Report added on. It's going to be impossible to know if Wilson is really looking sharp until we see him in live game action. At 34 years old, Wilson is in danger zone of regression. Not everyone ages the same way as Tom Brady. Peyton has no choice but to be as positive as possible. Wilson's contract is an albatross with no clear outs until after 2025. After the disaster that was 2022, Wilson is going to have to prove it in games before any hype can be believed. And yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm not really going to disagree. I'm not going to be harsh on anyone that is pumping the brakes on the Russell Wilson hype train with Sean Payton, because after last season, we do have to see it to believe it, right? We can't just go off of word of mouth and some clips on Twitter of Russell Wilson throwing a nice pretty ball to Jerry Judy with no real defense being played. Like, we have to wait until week one and even probably beyond that to know whether or not Sean Payton is going to save Russell Wilson's career. Now, this was not the only storyline Bleacher Report included in their article. Some other ones I thought you guys might find interesting. They are buying Devontae Adams as happy as a Raider. Yeah, who's not happy living in Las Vegas and making millions of dollars? They are selling that Lamar Jackson will be running less in a new offense with the new OC coming over. They're buying that Elijah Moore is having a strong start in Cleveland. They are selling Darren Waller, transforming the Giants' passing game. They're buying the Miami Dolphins that uh, need to add a linebacker. They are also buying Desmond Ritter's having some accuracy concerns. So, some good, some bad right there. But hey, it is May going into June. We still have a ways to go. Now, Russell Wilson last season, um, don't really need to remind anyone of this, but I'm going to remind Russell Wilson of this. Like, he has to bring it this year. He's coming off a 16 touchdown, 11 interception season. And when you just look at those raw numbers, they actually don't look as bad as the way it felt in the moment. Like 3,500 yards, that's not too shabby, almost 4,000. But no, it felt 10 times worse than that, right? Do you remember at one point we were going to keep track of whether or not Russell Wilson had more bathrooms in his house than touchdowns in the season? Like, we cannot forget that. We have to remember that. Now, before we get on to the next segment of today's show, 
our Vikings channel here at Chat Sports put up a, uh, I wouldn't say a record number, but a pretty big eye popping number 41 subscribers off one video alone. So the boss kind of gave Patrick Seatman a pat on the back and hey, let's break that number, right? Let's break that record. Let's beat 41 subs in a video. Let's get to 42. Let's get to 43. Let's get those numbers up there. Hit that sub button if you have not already. Now, Russell Wilson joins a long list of quarterbacks who have struggled since that 2015 Super Bowl. These are all the starting quarterbacks, sorry, Kendall Hinn, not included, since the post, uh, since the Peyton Manning era. Trevor Simeon, 30 touchdowns and a 13-11 record, which doesn't really look all that great, and it didn't feel all that great at the time. But looking back, I would tell you this much, uh, it is way better than you think. Uh, Paxton Lynch, Brock Osweiler, and Case Keenum followed. Then you had Brandon Allen, <laughs> uh, Joe Flacco. Talk about name a random Bronco player. That's Brandon Allen. Flacco went two and six. Uh, Drew Locke, 25 touchdowns, eight and 13 record. Jeff Driscoll, three touchdowns in a one game start. Brett Rippon played or started twice. He tossed a pair of scores. Teddy Bridgewater might be the best statistical quarterback of them all. 18 touchdowns and a 7-7 seven and seven record. Like, if you ignore what these players did before and after their time in Denver and just went purely based off of their time in Denver, Teddy Bridgewater, 18 touchdowns, 7-7 seven and seven record. He might be the best of them all. So, who is it? Who do you think the best quarterback is post Peyton Manning? Don't factor in what people have done since they played with the team or after they or before they played with the team. Just based on what they did at mile high, who do you think it is? I think I have to go with Teddy Bridgewater, right? At least he was a 500 quarterback. Maybe it's Trevor Simeon. I'd probably stick with Bridgewater, but uh, let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section. And while you are, let me tell you guys about a great deal going on right now. Fanatics has a two-shirt combo deal. It's definitely getting warm out. Summer is here. So go to chatsports.com slash Broncos combo. That link's in the comments and the description. You get not one shirt, but two shirts on sale, baby. So rep your favorite squad all summer long with a great t-shirt combo deal. Drew Sanders was included in a CBS Sports article along with eight other rookies that have stood out so far at OTA. Now, this was the Broncos draft pick uh, in the middle of the third round. And Drew Sanders, he logged an interception during rookie minicamp off Ben DiNucci. Definitely the talk of training camp so far, excuse me, of OTAs and rookie minicamp so far amongst all the rookies. Now, Sanders comes off a very impressive season at Arkansas. Former five-star recruit, went to Alabama, was a backup player there, wanted a better chance to get some playing time, so he transfers up to Fayetteville, and he made the most of last season. Nine and a half sacks as an inside linebacker, right? He's kind of a Micah Parsons light where he'll never really be a defensive end like Micah has become for Dallas, but he's going to be one of the most best, like, blitzing aggressive off-ball linebackers in the game. And all the questions were, can he keep up in coverage? I mean, yeah, a lot of PBUs and an interception to go along with it during rookie minicamp. So I'd say so far, yeah. Now, here was the entire list of rookie OTA stars. Bryce Young, Anthony Richardson, C.J. Stroud, all impressing so far. Devon A. Chain down in Miami out of Texas A&M. Okay, keep an eye on that for fantasy football purposes. Ty J. Spears behind Derrick Henry. Tank Dell in Houston. We had three Texan players, and that's what happens when you pick one and two with Will Anderson. Uh, the former BYU wide receiver in L.A. with the Rams, Puka Nacha. Uh, I don't think I pronounced that at all, but I kind of like my pronunciation more. And then Drew Sanders. So talk about a team amongst a handful of other teams that picked one, two, or four, or early at least, a first or a second round pick. Only Denver on that list without a first or second round pick amongst the uh, other stars of OTA so far. Now, Sanders joins a very talented inside linebacker room. Josie Jewell, Alex Singleton were both very underrated players, I thought, last year. Not going to get a ton of national attention when you're not putting, you know, pick sixes and fumble recoveries for scores up on the stat sheet. But still, they were one of the best off-ball linebackers in football in all of 2022. Now, Drew Sanders might not start week one. That You know, you, you signed, you re-signed Alex Singleton. Josie Jewell, I thought, looked really good last year. He was one of the most consistent pieces of that defense when he was available. 
But I feel like if Drew Sanders gets an opportunity to start because an injury pops up to Sand to Singleton or to Josie Jewell, he's probably never going to lose that job, right? He's just that talented where once he finally gets the nod and he gets an opportunity to get on the field and do more than just some blitz packages and special teams, he's never going to relinquish that job. Kind of like Alex Singleton when he filled in for Jonas Griffith, who remember we were all so high on after a couple of games in 2021. Yeah, Alex Singleton got the job, and then he was never going to give it back. So I think that might be the case for Drew Sanders. Now, who is your favorite rookie so far? Early signs are this rookie class is looking pretty, pretty, pretty good, right? You've got Riley Moss at corner, Marvin Mims, the speedy wide receiver, JL Skinner, the hard-hitting safety, Alex Forsythe, the last pick of the class, might be the first one to start if he beats out Lloyd Cushenberry for the starting center gig. So, handful of different routes you can go. Let me know who your favorite rookie is of this class. That's going to do it for us on today's show. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, taking some time out of your day, and joining us. If you have not subscribed yet, I uh, kindly ask you to go ahead and do so. That's the YouTube cliche in me. Like the video, all that good stuff, and we'll see everyone later. Thank you.